Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. You know, one of the beautiful things about Norfolk is all the water, but it comes with a responsibility. And I think we've seen a lot of changes over the next, uh, the last few years, and I hope Tanner Council will confirm that. Tanner Council, Hampton Roads Grassroots Coordinator with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me, Bob. Okay, now that when you talk about the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, what do you guys worry about? Is it just that body of water that's uh, by, the, by the bridge tunnel? So... Not really. Uh, okay. That is the that is the Chesapeake Bay is the large national treasure that we all know, but it really is the receptacle for, you know, tens of thousands of miles of other streams, rivers, and tributaries. The Chesapeake Bay watershed is a 64,000 square mile landmass. Hello. So this goes big parts of Pennsylvania, um, Maryland, Virginia, parts of New York, West Virginia and all of DC. Whenever it rains there, that water is draining into Chesapeake Bay. So you can't really save the bay, which is our motto and mission, right. without working on these tributaries that work all the way up through the watershed. So when you're enjoying the Lafayette River or the 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 uh, Elizabeth River or any of its tributaries, you could be impacting the bay in a negative or positive way. Absolutely. The Elizabeth and Lafayette Rivers are tributaries to Chesapeake Bay, right here at the, at the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. But you can, we also do work up in the Susquehanna River, which runs all the way back up into uh, Pennsylvania, all right. the major rivers of Virginia. I mean, all of, this, all of it impacts, all of it's flowing down here towards us. Okay, I, I made an uneducated guess that we're in better shape today than we were a few years ago. Is that true? A lot of people come up to us anecdotally and say the water's looking better, it's looking clearer, yeah. we're catching more fish. And we are seeing some encouraging signs of improvement. The science is showing us that. Uh, it is still a system, though, that is dangerously out of balance. It is still a system that requires um, a lot of vigilance. And we have, we have strong momentum going right now for bay cleanup efforts. And it's just we've got to, we've got to stay on top of it. Now, is the foundation, kind of describe what the foundation is. Chesapeake Bay Foundation is, um, is the largest nonprofit exclusively uh, committed to the Chesapeake Bay. It was formed in 1967, flash forward 47 years, um, and we have um, uh, 215,000 members. About 72,000 of them are in Virginia. And it is, um, a lot of times people think of it as it's, it's education. A big part of what we do is education, right. taking um, students and teachers out on you know, trips on the water. We don't go into the classrooms as much. We take them out on, on our boats and in field experiences. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, environmental restoration. So that might be putting oysters in the water, stocking oyster reefs, um, shoreline restoration efforts, putting trees in the ground. Um, and then a big part of what we do is advocacy, which is connecting citizens with their elected officials okay. and working directly with elected officials to affect change on the books because we can take as many kids out as we like and we can put as many oysters in the water, but without some real visceral change on the books, um, who knows how long it'll really last. Now, when you said your boats, what kind of resources do you all have and assets do you have for? We have, we have several different fleets uh, of canoes. Uh, we have skipjack. We have um, uh, renovated work boats. We have these vessels which can take large amounts of people, and whether it's a bunch of canoes or the B. Heyman Clark, which a lot of people see in our waterways around here, um, which is a, um, an old dead rise, which has been converted as an education vessel. Okay, cool. So with these really cool trips that we take the students and teachers on where they can see, smell, you know, taste, touch the bay, you know, and, and the local waterways. Life-changing experiences for a lot of these kids. Now, where do, where do your resources come from then? You mean financially? Yeah, the financial. So we're supported in a, to a large degree by our membership. And again, 215,000 members. Um, we also work with, um, with, with federal local, state grants, um, and, um, and also other donations that come in from private donations that come in. Okay, now I, I tease this, uh, dep this segment by saying that, and getting you involved, getting the, re the, the viewer involved, how can they get involved? Obviously, donate some money. <laughs> sure, <laughs> money's great. Um, but there are so many ways that you can be directly involved with CBF, whether that's through Clean the Bay Day, which is our big annual litter cleanup that mm -hmm. happens the first Saturday in June. Um, you can become an oyster gardener and grow oysters um, from a pier or dock, uh, which we, we eventually take those back and transplant them. And on again, the that's anywhere in the tributary, so it doesn't have to be at the bay it's, itself? Right. Anywhere okay. where there's salty water, you right. can grow oysters. And we grow them all up and down the sort of like crusty eastern side of the state. <clears throat> um, there are a lot of um, 
Uh, there's a grasses program where you can grow underwater grasses at home for transplanting, which are really suffering in the in the in the bay. Uh, we have annually, just all year long, if you were if you were connected with us, you were getting our emails, you'd see that there are fairs and festivals, other smaller projects. Um, there is a speakers bureau we can go and do presentations on behalf of Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And I'd say that one of the best ways that you can be involved, really, is just to pay attention to water quality issues in your mm -hmm. area and then let your elected officials know that you appreciate what they're doing or at least let them know that, that you're paying attention in general. Um, this, is, this is probably the most basic way you can get involved. And just being aware that you don't necessarily have to see the water to know that you can impact that water, right? Right. We are all affected by the water one way or another. My colleagues that work up in Pennsylvania, they work to make that connection for farmers and citizens up there that everything that they do um, affects what's happening everywhere downstream and that they have a responsibility as well. But your, your local water body, in a lot of cases, this is a source of, um, uh, it's an economic engine for you. It's, uh, it brings in tourism. Mm -hmm. It's what, what runs businesses and fisheries and it brings, we bring food out of our waterways, so it's incredibly important no matter where you are in the watershed. Okay, I'm gonna uh, remind the viewer that while we're taping this, it's pouring down rain. Right. So probably should let you hit the road so you can keep right. an eye on it. What's happening right now outside is actually the big source of pollution. It's the stormwater events, this polluted runoff, wherever it comes, it's coming down, it's running across our streets, it's picking up pollutants, primarily nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment along the way. Well, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go home after this and take care of my dog's waste, I promise. Very good. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks a lot, Tanner. Thanks, Thanks for. Okay, when we come back, we're going to enjoy that bay with some art. Stay tuned.